three, two, one. This is the smoothest car I've ever ridden in. Welcome back to the What's Inside show. I am the host, Dan Markham, also the creator of the YouTube channel, What's Inside, that has over 7 million subscribers. And in this podcast, we take a look inside the minds of some of the most interesting people in the world that create things. This podcast, I'm really excited about. We have a couple of all-stars when it comes to electric cars in the automotive space. And they are both from Mercedes-Benz, and not just from Mercedes-Benz, but from the electric cars division, or the EQ division. The first is Wolfgang Wirth. He is a friend. We've worked together for four years in multiple places around the world. So if you're speeding up and you're really fast, it's going to be bright and white. Um, and if you're slowing down, it's going to be um, more colorful. In this case, it's blue because it's EQ. It's our color. Wolfgang is the manager of the global product communications for electric car division or the EQ division. So I've filmed videos with him in Tokyo. We shut down the strip in Las Vegas on the Las Vegas Boulevard. We've been in Lisbon, Portugal together. We've been in Stuttgart, Germany together making videos, Amsterdam, Norway, all over the world. And he has given us access to some of the coolest cars. I seriously feel like I'm in like a spaceship right now. <laughs> in fact, a couple weeks ago, we just released a video of the new EQS. And Wolfgang was the one that kind of put this together and gave me the opportunity to see this car before anybody else in the world. Here we go. Just from driving it around the block, I can tell you, this is the smoothest car I've ever ridden in. It's really exciting to see Mercedes-Benz actually get into the EV space and start to launch and roll out the electric cars. The first major car that's gonna come out in America is the EQS, and it's kind of a spin off of the S-Class. That video was not sponsored, and this podcast is not sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, so my opinions are basically my opinions. EQS that I was in is about 98% there to the production model that will come out later this fall. And so yes, there were some bugs with the user interface that I think they're going to work on before the actual launch. And we're gonna to talk to Christoph about that today. Ask some questions about what things they've learned from the launch over the last week. And then also what their plans are for future electric cars, because Mercedes-Benz wants to become a major player in the electric car space. We are also going to talk to one of the heads of all of the electric cars division for Mercedes-Benz. This is Christoph Starzynski. He's the vice president of the EQ division architecture or the electric vehicle architecture division. We have our guests now in the studio. We have Christoph and Wolfgang. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dan. Thanks for having us. So the first thing I want to mention is it's like 1130 AM here and it's, it's what 730 PM out there for you guys. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Day is almost over here. Yeah. Almost over. You guys work too hard. 730. I'm already like getting the kids to bed, ready to go. So thank you for taking time and coming into the studio like late in the day so that we could put this together. But I have had, I had such a good time last week driving the EQS. Like it was, I, I said it on my video and a lot of people have asked me, some of my Tesla fanatics and then also just like friends and family that I talked to, they're like, first of all, I loved your video. But second, was it really that good? Did you re was it really that comfortable and that luxurious? And I tell them, I'm like, yes, this was not like a sponsored thing where they're paying me to say this is really comfortable and most electric, most comfortable electric car I've ever ridden in. But I really like the car. I think if this is going to be the first one in America, you guys did a great job. If you could tell me a little bit about like behind the scenes, how we even got to this point to where you decided to send a car to New York City so that we, some of us YouTubers and car reviewers could review it. Um, let me know kind of the behind the scenes of that. I think um, th this goes back maybe uh, yeah, almost, I would say, one and a half years ago. I, I was in a test drive in, uh, in uh, California, actually, with, with the first prototypes. And uh, Wolfgang and I came up with the idea to do a, a shooting uh, with the car and the Vision. There's actually also a Vision. I think you've been driven the Vision probably in Japan, if I remember it. Oh, the Vision was something else. That was beautiful. Exactly. So at that time, we said, look, we've got the Vision right now in L.A. You guys are in, actually, we were in San Francisco, and then we were going down the U.S. 1 to Los Angeles. And Wolfgang and I met there actually the first time physically. So we, we had a good time there. We had, we had a great shot. We were at the Aqua Dulce Airport there, um, did some shots. And then we sat down at the bar in the evening and said, look, we need to do something special with Mercedes EQ and with this car. This car is so special. We need to do also something special when it comes to introducing this car to the world. And this is how the whole idea developed. And actually it was Wolfgang's idea. He said, look, hey, I've got a better idea now. Let's do something really crazy, and we're going to get cars over um, to a selected uh, crowd of people 
uh, in the U.S. and we had also a couple of here. At that time, of course, we didn't know that COVID was coming that hard uh, to the world. So we were still thinking in a process of us being also there and had a personal uh, chat. So, um, But we still thought, okay, let's do it. We have a great crew in, in uh, New York City, actually, and we had a couple of guys uh, from our plant in Alabama, which were going up. I think they gave you the car. So this was this was how the whole idea was was born, and it developed, and actually Wolfgang and his team planned it out. The thing is, it doesn't sound that like that crazy to give someone a car, right? We are a car manufacturer. We build cars and we sell them. So why not give you an early access? But um, the car you drove was probably built sometime in, in December, January. And we need to make sure that we build some of those cars that early stage that they can go to people outside of our company. And we need to make sure that all the software on that, especially safety software, is, is done right before we hand it over to someone else. So um, that was the part where uh, the whole team of Christoph came into play and they really f needed to find those cars, two cars to go to the East Coast, two cars to stay here in Stuttgart or at least one stay in Stuttgart, one go to London, and and having the assets that people actually can get into the cars. That was uh, much trickier than you might think when you think, okay, get us a car, we, we use it. How did it go with the launch? I know you, we, it was nice because we were able to tease out a few days before the actual launch went. Then launch night came. Now you've had a chance to digest like all of the media coverage and everything. What's your take on how thing, how the car's launch went out? From what we can uh, what we can read, and obviously the feedback we got either from videos, newspapers, calls, text, uh, Freemas, WhatsApp, YouTube, uh, everything went pretty smooth, pretty good. Of course, if you if you start a program like this a couple of years ago, I mean, it's like going on a on a on a theater straight stage that day. So you you're performing, performing, and then you go to the big audience at that day. So everyone had a little bit of a, of course. Um, excitement, but at the end of the day, once the the the, the launch was done, I mean, we, we went through the through the video, which was also some kind of cool because we went through different places in the world. We um, were in uh, Germany, and then we went to Australia. We went to um, Paris. We went to and uh, California, Nevada, and then we ended up with with Sajat in in um, the Shanghai. So the whole scenery fit pretty good together um, and yeah for for us it was the perfect ending of a long story um, which started a couple of years ago now of course we have to start the program in the plant and then deliver the cars to the customers uh, by late summer and it was great Dan it was just great honestly reading all the headlines and uh, watching the videos You work so hard to to build the actual car, but then you wanna you wanna sell it. You wanna show it the world how proud you are. And um, we got such positive feedback on this. Um, your your video was one example, but also traditional media just um, is very excited that there's something coming from Mercedes, that there is a luxury alternative, that it's finally electric and it has a really good range. So all those aspects were um, were really well received in the media. Um, and so it was a joy to read all uh, all of this and it paid off um, the hard work during the last months. So how is it going to look for somebody like, for example, save, save for me, if I am looking to buy the Mercedes EQS, is it once it launches, you say it's going to launch in America this fall, basically, do I, is it going to be your traditional, you go into the dealer, the local dealership, we have one like two miles from my house. And that's where you go through the whole process, choose all your options and everything. Or is there, it seems like with electric cars, it's, I mean, Tesla's kind of led the way, but people are so used to just going online and just picking out, they don't have tons of options, but they just pick out their car and then they go pick it up. And it's kind of in a way like hands-free. What does the, what does the purchase and then pickup process look like in America? Or what are you hoping it looks like for the EV? So, so we're in headquarters here in Stuttgart. So we, um, we prepare this for several markets. Um, and it, the experience is different in each market. So we have markets that have online um, opportunity to order a car straight away. Um, I'm not sure if the US is going to launch this for um, for the EQS. Um, other European uh, markets do have that, for instance. Um, so do you just go online, pick what you want, your options, and say, order it. Um, so we need to check with the US colleagues if they have actually planned this for fall or how is this going to develop. 
But f- of course, there is a regular car lounge like you're used to that you can go to your dealer and check out the EQS and then um, pick one and get it or just order it your specific um, configuration and then get it a little later. Um, I Yeah, I'm, we're not 100%, 100% sure how it's done in the US, to be fair. But I mean, the, the good thing is going to be then that I think maybe different than in the past, you will have a lot of more opportunities to get over-the-air updates for additional features, which you already buy then in the vehicle itself. You know? So that will be definitely a, a game changer from the past that you have much more opportunities to really download after you bought the car um, at the point of sale. Yeah, you can get additional services. So, That's great. That's good because I, I, I remember, I don't know that I put this in the video as much, but I remember when we went to Norway and we tested the EQC out there. We had a couple of days with it. Super fun to drive around. But the interior felt just like the EQ, or not even the EQA, like the A-class that was launched in the Netherlands when they did the new UI update. And it was like the same buttons, the same everything. And it didn't feel like it was something where you could get software updates to it. And so I was, in a way, I was like, this is kind of just like the gas car, but it has electric inside of it. And so that's one thing that I loved about the new hyper screen with the EQS is that it looked different. It felt more futuristic versus kind of like the regular Mercedes-Benz buttons and screen and everything. And it does allow you to have over-the-air software updates. Um, in, I gave some feedback afterward. This wasn't like the final production car. So I didn't put a lot of my thoughts into like how you t- the touchscreen works and everything, because it did seem like it was not the full production. It was a little slower. Some of the things I, I gave some suggestions on like where to put certain text and things. I did notice in Marquez Brownlee's video, he did talk a lot more about we need to get the IU, the interface, like up to a higher level. Like what, what uh, changes are going to be made? based off of like the car that we saw and then the car that will actually come out. Will there be some changes to the software side of it at launch? Yeah, of course. I mean, we that was the whole purpose. I mean, the whole, we, we knew exactly, especially when it comes to performance of a system, this is the last thing you're going to do. I mean, the, the first thing is going to do, of course, you put the right hardware in there so that you are able to have a good performance. And then you're putting the feature in there. And then once the feature are all full functioning, you're trying to stable the system, the stable is, the, the system is stable, and then you work basically on performance, 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 and of course also on UI. The first, I mean, there's a lot of um, testing going on and then you see, okay, does that really make sense in that scene or do we put this feature here? So this is now the fine tuning and the good thing about software that you can still work on it. Um, it's much more easy than hardware. I mean, hardware is basically done. You're not doing anything else. No. But now the real work starts uh, when it comes to performance and user friendliness. And this is this is the next couple of months till uh, late summer, which we're going to work on. Yeah. One easy software update that could be done, and I think I gave this feedback to the engineers, was I did the launch mode where I did like zero to 60 to see how fast it would go. Okay, we're going to try launch mode. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay. Woo. Okay. So zero to 60, it said 5.1 seconds. Shoot, that's slow. The thing I love about the EQS is that once you get going and you're driving, my wife is going to love this because it's the smoothest ride ever. And part of that has to do with the way that it accelerates. Um, when you're on the highway, you can push it and go really fast. I probably pushed it. You guys are probably looking at the numbers of how fast I drove that car on the highway. And you're like, oh man, maybe we don't give this guy the car to drive in the future. But it also held it back from the launch side of it. And I would love to see just an option where you just like choose like a launch mode. Um, Mercedes or GMC calls it Watts to love, Watts to love, something like that. They have a strange name for it, but basically it's like you push a button, you turn it into launch mode, it lowers the suspension. And then as soon as you click on push on it, it accelerates right away. I mean, we've got, we've got the launch mode when you, when you look on our, on our AMG cars, I mean, at least the traditional ones, they have a launch mode. Um, so, so I know what, what you're asking for. Um, I've, I've, I have a question to you because I watched that uh, movie, of course, a couple of times. Family watched it. They all find it actually pretty cool movie, pretty cool guy. I have a question. Did you stand on the brake when you launched it or did you have it on the, on the basically on our hold position and then you... Ex- so do you remember if you... Because I couldn't really tell if your foot was going off the brake and you hit the gas or if you just were standing already and then hit the gas. 
Good question. So we were on, you know, in New Jersey, they have these service off ramps. So you like pull off and they have the gas stations. It's kind of unique. They don't have that in Utah. In Utah, you have to like get off and you're in the city. And so we pulled up and we waited for all the cars to clear and we're like, okay, we have this zero to 60 window. Um, and so we pulled up, I, I completely stopped it and I had my foot on the brake and then I had, we turned on that app that tracks it, your zero to 60. And as soon as you start moving, it goes. So I took my right foot off of the brake and quickly just pushed all the way down on the gas pedal. So I didn't push both at the same time, but like the gas car, sometimes you can like push both. But anyway, that, and I did put it in sport mode first, but I didn't see like a launch mode button, but yeah. Is there a better way I could have done it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I mean, better. I, I, so I hope I, I can come to the U.S. sometimes later this, this year and we can do it together. But, but I, but I, but I think my personal, just watching what you did. Um, we, you know, we have this hold function in the car. So once you hit the brake a little stronger, the car goes basically into a hold mode. And then once you hit the gas, it takes a couple of uh, milliseconds, at least not to say a second till you get the power, you know? So that, that's why I say is that's, this is what I, I was trying to, to really see it on the, on your movie, but the problem was the watch was exactly there where your left foot was. Yeah. But I. My personal opinion is you probably hit the hold button and then you hit it and hit it there. It's still, I mean, it's still going to be at 4.3 seconds. You're not going to get, let's say, to the to the, to the, uh, to the uh, speed of the ludicrous mode or something, but it's not going to be the one experience you had, definitely. Yeah, and tying it back to kind of what I was saying earlier about the comfort of writing, that is what I felt. I felt like the first, I felt like it was a few seconds, but it wasn't going at first. It was like waiting, waiting, waiting. And we're kind of moving slow. And then all of a sudden it just revved up. You heard the noise of the engine. Okay. The, the made up engine. And it was, it really pushed it, but it was that initial, usually with you, when you step on an electric car, it's like, bam, right away. And I feel like instant acceleration, but I feel like the Mercedes, it's smart. It protects you from doing that all the time because that makes my wife gets nauseous early or easily. And when I drive, if I have it in that mode where it's like instant acceleration and I don't do it properly, she's going to get sick when we drive. But in the Mercedes Benz, she's not going to feel that in the EQS. <laughs> but I mean, it's a good feedback. I mean, I, we will take it definitely with us. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science to to put a mode like this in in the, in the vehicle, you know. Race start for EQS. Yeah, that's the request you have, yeah. right? Okay. And there's an AMG cool. one coming, so maybe that makes sense to put it in there. But Dan, what you said is you you were you're talking about if we were talking about performance of the hyperscreen and that we're gonna definitely gonna fix that till the launch because we're just in, in beta software um, status right now. Um, but the other thing that was mentioned is um, the UI itself. How is it designed? How does it function? And, and we get totally different feedback from different users. And we do have like three different styles you can select. You can select multiple styles in what we call the instrument cluster just behind your steering wheel. But you can also adapt the, the other styles to your preferences. Um, but it's a hundred, it's it's a, it's a great question to ask like how can this software develop and the UI that we designed there, and of course we come from a Mercedes customer and a Mercedes brand environment, and as you said in the EQC every Mercedes gasoline driver would feel right at home, right? You get into it, you you feel you're in an EQC. There's um, some more progressive elements in there, some other colors and new materials, and it's slightly different, but it's still a Mercedes, and you feel it right away. With the EQS, we we went one step further and said, okay, we definitely want to make this a high tech, pro progressive product that's um, unseen in the Mercedes world, and we definitely did this. And on the software side, we still offer this. Um, um, this you can recognize it, it, it. That is a Mercedes software on 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 the screen, and um, I think we need we need some more time to develop and, and take our customers on that journey um, to so they can still adapt to that system and and uh, how we interpret it, uh, interpret it into to in, uh, how we decided yeah if i would have had more time with the car i think i would have it, i would have understood some of the we we used an s class before we cut open the s class seat in germany a few years ago um you guys were awesome you sent us an s class to drive for the week for an entire week and on the first day i was like oh there's so many buttons i can't figure out what to do and then on maybe day five i got really comfortable and i knew what i wanted to do and i kind of 
even though it was only six hours, I started to get more familiar with how to remove charging stops or how I wanted the maps to look, which you can change it within the EQS software. So just like with anything, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to the interface. And it's hard to get a firm opinion of it based off of just like six hours. So, but overall, like I loved it. It was beautiful and it looked really nice. And I'm excited for the actual one to come out and, and to test that one. Um, one of the main question I had from people, and which I'm sure you guys are getting this, but I'm wondering if you have a, any kind of date is everybody wanted to know what is the price going to be? And so I guess the question is, do you know when the pricing will be released? Yeah, it's going to be released in, in June, at so least in Europe. Uh, one of the things I was really impressed about that I didn't include in my video was, and it's the biggest roadblock that everybody talks about when it comes to electric cars that basically are not Tesla's. Everybody says, well, it's the ecosystem. It's the, you have to have the charging network. And one of the things that was really cool that the, Mercedes-Benz employees that were from Alabama that were there explaining things to me beforehand, they said, Hey, we've got, we have a, we have a partnership with Electrify America where you can pull up, plug your car in to certain charging stations and you don't have to do anything else. It's going to recognize your car, recognize your account and just start charging and it'll bill to your account. And, uh, and he's, and they said, hopefully by the fall, that'll be rolled out to many, many more Electrify America stations. We don't know how many it'll be at launch, but can you tell me a little bit about that system, about the charging infrastructure and what things you guys are working on there for America? Yeah, I mean, we are, we have um, Mercedes Me Charge, let's say, at the, as, the, as the brand, if you want to call it, for this. It's, uh, it's, it's worldwide. I mean, of course, it's country-specific, but we have basically one uh, system and with this system, you can charge at probably 500,000 stations around the globe. Now, looking at the U.S., um, we will be able to uh, use basically excluding, of course, Tesla right now, because Tesla also has a different, uh, you know that they have a different uh, charging system. We will be able to use probably, I would say, 90% of them um, with that ecosystem. Of course, the big the big one right now for, for DC charging is Electrify America uh, for the fast fast charging, um, but the the, the uh, idea is basically included in your ecosystem, so that the, that you can basically charge wherever you want, and then you get it uh, as he said is one invoice, um, and then you see the charging uh, possibilities. So we will have plug and charge for Electrify America, and uh, we are working, of course, rolling this out. Um, in the world. Yeah, that's cool. We get like the, the technology is called plug and charge because it just, you arrive, you plug it in, it charges, you unplug it and you just leave and that's it. No, no worries. Get everything in you, into your inbox. I don't and, even and know if it. I, if I'm allowed to say that then right now, I know, I know we have a, we have a communication rollout plan for <laughs> plug and charge. So I'm not even allowed, I'm allowed, so I'm we, allowed to say, but I can at least tell you, but, but I can at least tell you, yeah, the ecosystem is pretty, pretty convenient. Um, and we are also working on a convenient solution for for the home charging, of course, and then uh, the work charging uh, is also in the way. So there is going to be a, a overall charging communication sometimes uh, between now and and summer from the U.S. colleagues. But you can be sure that we basically will definitely have the convenience of either use an app or the Mercedes Me Charge, or you can even go through the head unit. Or the easiest way, of course, is then plug and charge. Yeah. I love that. That's that's the most convenient. You want to just pull up. There's plenty of chargers that are not Tesla chargers that I see all the time on road trips. It's getting to the point where there's so many of them and nobody's ever parked there. I've, I've, I've seen, I, there's these huge stations for Electrify America that have like 10 different chargers and I'll drive by and there's nobody there. And so I've, I've thought about that. I'm like, if it becomes easy to, like you said, plug and charge, we're, it's going to be a game changer because I remember when we were in Denmark, it was early, but we had to have somebody from Mercedes Benz there helping us on, on the system to charge because it was like talking to it and typing in your info and like going into your car setting somehow. And that process, I was like, okay, this is not sustainable. I don't think we're going to be able at, at launch to have every charging station with, with plug and charge, but the main one is definitely the target to have that ready. Or at least, as I said, you can start from the head unit. Once you have pulled up to the charging station, you can immediately hit it there and then start the charging process. Or we give you an, an app or a nice card. But but the topic is you don't have to have like five, ten different cards. You can easily do it either with with plug and charge or with a one 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 click. 
Let's say it this way. But that's the cool thing then, right? We, we're in a, in a time where we like two years ago, we were somewhere in Denmark or in Norway and we're driving EQCs and other cars and, and we see the, the, the development in that short period of time. So we come up now with a, the EQS, a totally different car, um, re really the AV of your life probably uh, that you want to have. And then uh, we take care of the whole ecosystem and that develops as well. And hopefully um, the, the fast charging network is growing as fast as we are looking for, um, at it. Um, and then it's it's going to be really convenient. And I think this is this is part of the ramp up of the world, getting ready for EVs. And I'm, I'm super excited that it, it's just happening all around the globe. It's happening here in Europe with Ionity. It's happening in the US. Um, so um, you don't have to worry about range or anything. You just, there's definitely going to be some charging option for you. And there's definitely, if it's a Mercedes, there's going to be a way to charge easily using the, the services Christoph described. How has it been accepted? How have EVs been accepted in Germany? Well, they're pretty strong right now. Like um, this is really rising. We we see a lot of uh, demand for plug-in hybrids at the moment, so people are uh, using hybrids because um, they our hybrids have like usually a hundred kilometers of range, which is cool for every day. Like you can usually use that for all electric driving all day, and then um, to work if you go to work and not staying at home, <laughs> but um, and and using it there for grocery shopping or anything. The usual distances are lower than hundred kilometers, and we see uh, electric cars. Um, the demand for our just uh, recently launched EQA, the very the smallest one of the Mercedes models, the uh, Mercedes EQA. Um, is 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 huge, and that's that's a really positive feedback, and uh, I think we're we're growing strong right now. That's really good. Yeah, it's funny you say plug-in hybrids. I had a, it's not even a plug-in, but I had a hybrid this last year. My son has golf tournaments in the summer, and it's about four and a half hour drive from where I live, and so I it just didn't make sense for me to have an electric car and go on these road trips because sometimes we would drive up after school one day sleep he would do the golf tournament and then we'd drive all the way back and sometimes we'd drive up and back in the same day and it just became a bit for so we we ended up getting like a hybrid we got a honda accord hybrid and i've just put so many miles on it so i definitely as much as everybody's going toward ev i, I like having options for people that have different use cases if you're around town all day my wife can drive with an electric car all day. If you're doing a road, road trip every once in a while, you you have the chargers, like the EQS would be great. To, like we go to Las Vegas from my house and that would be a great car for it. So um, yeah, I think there, hopefully not everything goes to electric. Hopefully there's just some other uses, but um, so, okay, Christoph, what are you most excited about for the next year on the EQ side of things? Your EQ is not just EQS, not just EQA, not just ECUC. What is it? What does it look like over the next year for you that you're excited about? I'm excited about the most. I'm excited about that this this program is pretty rolling out now. So you've got EQS, EQE, the SUVs are coming. Um, we will have performance variances of it and probably sooner or later or my box. So there is a lot of coming rolling on this platform. And that's basically not only uh, being produced, of course, in Germany, but we go to the US, we'll go to China. So the car will also be produced in, in different countries. Um, at least the, the EQE and the SUV is going to be built in uh, the smaller SUV in, in Beijing. And then the, the two big SUV, the, the two SUVs for the rest of the world will be built in Tuscaloosa. So that's that's pretty exciting now rolling out a program and, and seeing the car on the roads, you know. And then number two, of course, um, continuously improving um, the, the E range, the, 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 uh, the whole program again. And then the software. I mean, working with this, you've got a good baseline now, but there is always air, which you can improve. So the the yeah the competition never sleeps, and you have to keep rolling, rolling, rolling. So this is this is the exciting part, and we can do probably a little bit more progressive things with the sub brand Mercedes EQ than you would probably do with a more technology oriented Mercedes brand. So we can also do a couple of things where where we uh, where we will go maybe a little bit further like we did the things with you then we would use, usually probably do with with the, I call it not a negative way the traditional way you know so that is the excitement i've got all the freedom now to do a couple of crazy things <laughs> yes let's see how that goes um yeah it's definitely cool to see the whole product lineup so then finally seeing next year a range of fully electric dedicated EQ models out there. That would be super interesting. Seeing the EQS as flagship, 
Then you see the EQE, like a beautiful business limousine, um, very sporty um, and interesting. You're gonna love it if, when it comes out. And then you see the big SUVs as mentioned already. And this, this when all this comes together and you just realize what a great product lineup this is, um, that's gonna be fantastic. Where, wherever we're gonna drive that, wherever it's gonna be presented, we don't know yet, but it's, um, we've seen that kind of setup in our design center, for instance, like do you see the four different models next to it and then you compare others to it and you just realize, okay, that's such a different product family and nothing that's out there right now does look like this. And um, I think this would be, if you would have asked me, <laughs> this would be the, the really exciting part um, for us to bring that family to life. Yeah, it's kind of funny to think back. So Wolfgang, we met in Lisbon, Portugal at a Mercedes Benz like like party thing. There's Web Summit going on in Portugal. And it was basically, you guys had like an event, like a party at this bar. And I was there for maybe 10 minutes. That was it. Um, Miriam reached out to me. She works at Mercedes Benz and said, come on over. I see that you're a YouTuber and you're speaking at Web Summit this year. And so I came with Hunter and we just happened to see you over in the corner. And as I was walking out to take a picture on the outside, and I don't know, it was funny that you recognized me. You're like, hey, I'm the one that works with Casey Neistat. And we've made, we've made videos together before. I've seen you with Casey. Let me take a picture to send it to Casey. And so I remember, though, there was that electric car that was down the EQC vision, basically. EQ, I can't even remember what they call it. Concept EQ. And it was just down in a glass box, like down in the middle of this park. It was beautiful. And you're like, is there anything that we could do? And I'm like, yes, I want to film a video with that car. And you're like, well, tomorrow we're doing a commercial. If you want to come out, we're, it's going to take two and a half hours to drive out to the coast. But if you want to come, you could ride in it for maybe two minutes. I can't guarantee you're going to get much time with it. But if that's good enough for a video, you can come. Next thing you know, we're there. We make a video. I think it got a few million views right off the bat. Like it did really well, but it was just a really fun experience. But that, it seems like so long ago, but to see how far that Mercedes-Benz has come over the time, there were times when I'm like, when is the car going to come to America? When are they going to do this? And then that second that I sat in the EQS and I felt those S-Class seats, the suspension riding on the highway and how smooth it was, I was like, okay, it may have taken a little longer than what I thought it was going to be for Mercedes-Benz. But it, but by not rushing it, you guys were able to do it right and make this car super comfortable. So it's been a fun process to like be behind the scenes and be able to watch some of this. Yeah, and and the the process was longer than we not that we expected. We can plan products; that's not a problem. But you you start a conversation like we did in Lisbon, right? We had the concept EQ as a show car there, and it's just it shows a design idea, different elements you still see today, like the black panel grill in the front or the. The, the real lights uh, as connected real lights and, and certain elements of the uh, surfaces. Um, and you start with that and you already know we're going to bring out the EQS in three years or maybe four. <laughs> and then um, you know, okay, that's what we're working on and that's what we do. And then someone else comes up to you and say, yeah, okay, you just, you just launched the EQC. Um, that's, that's very close to the GLC. And so, yeah, this, that's a conversion platform. Of course, um, we tried to do something quick and, and, and really useful for that kind of um, customer. And then, um, yeah, but we're looking for where's your dedicated EV? And we say, yeah, it's coming. And then this goes on and on. And, and now it's finally, we can finally show what we worked on for, yeah, four, even five, six years, depending on when you start the construction, the first drawings of it. Um, and you finally you can show it and say, okay, we, we were listening all the time. We knew what we wanted to do, um, but there were several steps we needed to, t we had to take. And, um, and now it's here. What do you see from the battery side of things? Where do you manufacture it? And do you see any obstacles like from a supply chain? I know that's about, that's been kind of an obstacle for a lot of different manufacturers, auto manufacturers to actually get enough batteries to provide for the cars. Are you guys able to keep up? Is there, and where do you produce them? I mean, we, uh, we get the, uh, the, no, speaking of the uh, EQS program, probably. I mean, we get the modules from uh, CITL and Ferris's. And then we assemble them uh, as a battery in uh, our own plant. So we get basically from two sources, the modules. Uh, the good thing is the modules are completely exchangeable. So you have uh, you have flexibility there. And of course, we've got uh, capacity flexibility at the supply base. So um, we, we there is an air where you can always breathe uh, depending on the market demand. Uh, but there is also, of course, the limit, not, not only from the battery side, but from the overall side i mean you, you you have a flex cap capability but uh, there is a limit for flex capability before you have to reinvest into 
uh, different lines again. Yeah. So the, to answer your question, um, we've got um, good contracts, um, but I mean, there is always a limit to what the volume is going to be. You yeah. know, and that that's that's basically what we have um, to answer to answer your question. And to, to add the bigger picture, so we're building a battery plants um, near our main production sites. So we're building a battery plant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We have one here in Stuttgart. We have one in in, um, or in Beijing. We also have the one in Commons, which are actually two. Um, so we're looking to to um, allocate those those battery um, facilities next to the actual plant, so that logistics are pretty smooth and uh, local emissions are also. Um, limited and then we have partners of course where we get um, the cells from as mentioned from Christoph from CATL and for us is um, now for the EKS program um, and and then we we actually built the batteries um, um, locally very locally next to the productions that's good Tuscaloosa so when are you going to be coming to America Wolfgang when are we going to see you again and do something fun together <laughs> I, yeah that's that's not up to me this is like a pandemic is out there. <laughs> Get your vaccines, and then we see how it works. Um, um, we were still hoping for for late summer, to be honest, to have a chance. Um, I don't know if Pebble Beach is taking place this year, and in what in which occasion, or how, how this is going to set up, um, or if there are any other opportunities in the in the late fall or f coming for the EQS yeah. launch um, to the US. We just don't know. We wish we were able to say yes, we're there. Um, see you in a few months. But um, once we we're able to travel there. We we'll definitely um, try to to see you guys, to see other medias, to get, uh, have the opportunities to check out the EKS uh, in in the next the software version. Probably um, there's that's definitely it. And then we're preparing for next year, 100. percent Like uh, in Tuscaloosa, things are ramping up for next year. Um, yep. And uh, Christoph, I think, has to travel a lot once it's allowed again. I would love to see the Tuscaloosa plant Let's do like a little what's inside of manufacturing a car or seeing the batteries and how you put them together. And I could do it in America. That's pretty cool to show a Mercedes Benz plant inside of America. I don't think a lot of people know that exists. No, we have a, I mean, the plant is, I think the battery plant will come a little bit later. Um, but, but for the, uh, for the production facility, we can definitely uh, go to, uh, to the South because I mean, I've worked there for seven years, so I can take you around. He's the um, guy. They've got they've got uh, actually not good Philly steaks, but I can tell you've got good barbie barbecue ribs and other things. So I can I can take you some cool places uh, in Alabama where you really really get good uh, ribs and everything. So that was one of the funny moments of making our video. And for those of you that are watching this podcast or listening to it, um, and you haven't seen my video, basically. They let certain number of media come and get this car, get the, the EQS and take it for six hours in one day. And then they took the night and they cleaned it and sanitized it and everything for the next person the next day. And so pretty much everybody just kept it in New York or New Jersey and reviewed the car and spent the six hours getting amazing pictures of B-roll shots. And I showed up that day. I don't know why. The night before, I'm like, what could I do with this? So everybody, the main feature that people are going to want to hear about is the range. And I think that's a big selling point. And so I'm kind of a dorky YouTuber, even though I'm 40 years old, like I do things that are kind of childish in a way, but I always have like a purpose behind it. So in my video, we ended up going, for those of you that haven't seen it, I decided to do a range test, but I decided to drive all the way to Philly. The engineers at Mercedes-Benz really want to get my feedback on what I think about the car. So we're going to test this real world. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Navigate to Gino's Stakes. It's 90 miles, give or take some, because we had to pull over and stop each way. And the range in the, Merce in the EQS is 478 miles tested in Europe with the different standards. And so I like to sell things. I used to be a pharmaceutical sales rep, but I like to sell things in a way that's more natural and fun. And so by me I'm going and getting cheesesteaks, I was basically telling the audience like, check this out. You can go on a super long road trip and not have to charge. And so hopefully people that don't want to see the full on breakdown of the specs of a car, at least they'll stay for some of the fun. And then they'll walk away going, Hey, the range anxiety is not bad at all. Like you can go get a cheesesteak in Philly and drive back to New York on the same day. So, but I was wondering what actual Mercedes Benz employees were going to think like, why did we give this guy a car? And he went and bought a cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh, that's cool. I mean, <laughs> I mean that was. I probably your your uh, your version is one of the most clicked in in, in our company now because everyone is was so funny. Also, at the beginning, you know, when we when you had the police in there and it was kind of kind of humorous. We were la yeah. we were laughing. I mean, that was 
pretty funny. And then of course you damaged the rim, which was okay. I mean, we we give you that. You at least you at least uh, took it to the next level there. So that's good. I mean, I know <laughs> that 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 can also happen in Alabama. I mean, we they've got also some potholes there. So there is uh, I. I drove a CLS down there, with, so I also have some experience with rims there. Oh, man. Well, it was funny because the previous week I was in Detroit with GMC, and they had their Hummer, their electric Hummer SUV. And it's a convertible. You can, like, take off the top, and there's four different sections. And then you also can open the back and put them in there. And as I was doing it for the video, they kept telling me, like, oh, be really careful. Don't, don't drop that because... This is the only one in the world that we have of this. And they, kept, they so I was terrified the whole time, even though I wasn't driving the car, just taking the top off. I'm like, oh no. So it's the second that I hit that rim, I'm sitting there thinking, oh no, this is, this car got shipped from Germany to America. This is probably the only wheel that it has. And so I told the guy that I was filming with, I'm like, if, if for some reason this is the only one, we are not including this in the video, but I felt so sheepish as I pulled up and I'm like, hey guys, I, I did make a mistake. I hit something. And then I showed them and they go, oh, don't worry. We have eight brand new ones upstairs. And I'm like, yes, Mercedes is prepared. <laughs> that was the purpose. I mean, you have to drive it. <laughs> yeah. And this is, those things happen. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. It was pretty funny when we were driving in and that, I don't know where that highway patrolman was going, but he had the car and he was driving and there was no traffic on that side of the lane. So we just started following him and I'm like, hey, film this guy. And I... I, I did show later. I was like, yeah, he, we were, he wasn't actually giving us an escort into the city. And then, but then I just cut it out and just made it kind of fun and just looked like we actually were getting a police escort. So anyway, that was, that was pretty fun. Yeah. We definitely don't do the orthodox um, car review videos that are in depth, but I think it turned out fun. <laughs> And he's, it's honestly, we asked you because we wanted your feedback. Yeah, no, it's, it's not like it's, it's, it's definitely wanted. It. It's it's um, one thing to watch it on YouTube, which is great and was good of good fun, and everybody in the company, uh, I think everybody loved it. Yeah. Um, and, and we gave it to you because we we know you're so experienced with electric cars and yeah. you're really into into the tech and luxury part of this, and so a perfect fit and and really valuable for us. The one thing that I was blown away with while driving on the freeway, and it's hard to really tell this on the video, but driving on the highway, typically you're used to an electric car. It has like regenerative braking to where when you let off the gas pedal, gas pedal, whatever you want to call it now that there's no gas, but when you let off the pedal, the acceleration, it, it, it starts to let off and it's recharging the battery pack. And so you're always kind of keeping your foot on the pedal at, at pushing it a little bit while you're driving on the highway, even at 85 mile an hour speeds. But with the Mercedes-Benz EQS, it was really smart. And it took a little getting used to. Once I got used to it, I'm like, I, I, I want that in my car always. Where you let off on the highway and it's smart enough to know, hey, this person is still on the highway going 85 miles an hour. There's no car in front of them for a while. They're not getting off the freeway. They're in the fast lane. And it just it's almost like it's on this rolling mode where it just rolls. It's not recharging the battery. But then as soon as you get close to another car, it'll start to kick in and use that regenerative braking. I feel like the AI that's involved with the driving experience is is one of the things that helps it get that 478 miles range, just because it's not your typical stop and go thing. And, and it made the riding experience on the highway so smooth. Yeah, because you, I mean, the the way how it works usually is if you, if you're, we call it coasting, you know, I mean, it's basically you using the, the, uh, like a perpetuum mobile, I mean, it's going, it's going. So the moment where you regenerate, of course, you get energy back in the battery, but you are also some kind losing a little bit of energy. That's for sure, because sooner or later, you have to hit the gas again to get to your speed, whatever you want to ride, 70, 75, 80. So the most efficient way in this moment is if you have no one in front of you, of course, is just let the car go, because then you're basically losing zero efficiency. And once you hit the brake or the car works with the uh, with the sensors, of course, you're regenerating then again. But you, you basically use the, the free power of the vehicle itself to just coast, you know, and, and it's it's amazing. I, I, I see I hear this comment always. It's amazing because you feel like you're not getting slow, smaller, uh, slower. I mean, there's basically you're not, almost not losing any any miles, you know, it's just going with zero energy. I mean, it's just running. That's a feature that not that many people covered on their videos. It's a hard thing to really describe, especially if you're somebody that hasn't driven. But that was something that when I'm talking about how it's the most comfortable ride ever, there's that, there's the shocks, 
how smooth they were. And then also just the seats and the comfort with the air, with the air freshener. Like it's the whole experience that you can't really explain, but I'm excited to, for people to figure that one out for, to drive it. It takes, it takes a minute for you to get used to it. But after you've been on the highway for maybe 45 minutes or an hour, I, I love it. Like I want that all the time when I'm driving the highway. So good job on that one with the AI. That was cool. Thank you. Is there anything in particular you guys would want to cover that you think that hasn't been covered that's an interesting topic? No, I think the the overall experience is exactly what you got right. Um, um, We try to do things like the recuperation that are, um, that's that's software engineering combined with the hardware engineering that like manage the the software and using all the sensors, which is... um, what only think, we do this way. So I we, think we what, yeah, what we checked out is actually because I think w- we we checked a little bit your driving behavior. Not not that we were watching you, but you can you can read it out. It was pretty cool because I think you were not going like as you said like sixty five miles an hour, no acceleration, and the range actually was pretty impressive still. So my guys looked it up and said, look, he he took it he took it not not so easy on the vehicle, and we still had a pretty pretty good. Uh, um, Real range, you know. I mean, the one thing is the certified range. The other thing is what's the real range. I mean, that that's the some all cycles are somehow, of course, uh, in a way, designed, you know. But the real range is, I guess, the most important part for for a customer, because that's what you experience. So I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is like the real range of an EV. And you don't see it on a gas car. Like you just see the needle and it's moving. It doesn't really tell you how many miles you have the whole time. And in some ways it makes people think that a car doesn't have as much range because they're like, oh, I can drive here. I have, it's 110 miles to get to Las Vegas. I have 200 miles range. How come when I get there, I have 10 miles left? Well, in the real world, there's wind, there's highway speeds that are a lot higher than what you're just testing it with the EPA side of it. And then the car is always adjusting based off of how you're driving. If you push it hard or you're accelerating quickly and doing like a launch mode versus just cruising on the highway, the numbers adjust a lot. And so I'm glad that you guys saw that my numbers were more real world. I drove it like I would drive it regularly and it held up. If it wouldn't have held up and we would have had a charge, that would have been a problem. But we did make it all the way to Philly and back and we stopped and did some things and we were driving it fast. Honestly, there were times I was driving it and I looked down, it was so smooth. And I looked down and I looked over to Eric who was helping me film and I go, oh my gosh, I'm going a hundred miles an hour. I doesn't even feel like it. Like this is so smooth right now. It's so quiet. So anyway, I had to slow down. I'm like, yeah, we need to not show this in the video, but <laughs> it was super smooth. So yeah, the real range was really good. And I think that's like an educational component that a lot of people need to figure out how it works. And, and, and the car did hold up. It wasn't some manufactured number in the system. No, we had the same, actually. I mean, the, the day you got the car, we had a we had a Germany also a YouTuber going, and usually, I mean, at this day the temperature dropped to, I think, three to three degrees Celsius, which is maybe thirty-eight Fahrenheit, and then you had to switch the tires, of course, because you need to go on winter tires. Then here and all, the whole thing started, of course, a lot of energy also to keep the car warm and everything, and he he was also pretty astonished because he went one fifty, one sixty kilometers kilometers uh, on the uh, on the autobahn. And he said also the same thing. I said, it's amazing. I mean, you couldn't get this this car down, you know. It was it's a big car, but it was also the feedback he gave us as the real range on this vehicle is unbelievable. So that that begs the question here. Um, Wolfgang, what's the fastest you've driven a Mercedes electric car on the Autobahn, top speed? Oh, I'm not, not that fast. I think um, a German car is like 180, I think, is the fastest I went. And a... Non-German car, probably a little bit faster, but I was not a prototype. <laughs> that, there's a few videos that I've wanted to do. Um, we did a really fun video with you with where we went to the Mercedes-Benz Museum, and it was uh, not even museum. It was just like warehouses full of cars. Is the Vision going to be the EQS Vision, which I think is like the most beautiful car I've ever seen in my life? Is that going to go into that warehouse museum somewhere just to always be there as one of the historical cars for Mercedes-Benz? This is a secret spot, right? Or we call it Holy Halls. So, um, uh, and you, you can't tell from the outside. It's somewhere really hidden in Stuttgart. Um, the Vision EQS, we're definitely going to keep that. That's um, that's a design icon. Um, it's where we could be even bolder than with the already bold series production car. Um, we're definitely going to keep that. Yeah. And plus the EQS. I mean, you have to imagine this is the first dedicated 
electric vehicle Mercedes had. So this will definitely make it also to, to the, the Hall of Fame of Mercedes because, I mean, we're all going to look back. And this is maybe going back to your question a couple of minutes ago. I mean, one of the most important things or exciting things for me is, you know, I always going to look back and tell my kids or grandkids, hopefully sometimes, that I was the first one who was... Uh, I had the honor to basically introduce Mercedes to the dedicated electric vehicle world, you know. So that's that's actually what what uh, drives me also a little bit is is to see that now coming all together. You know? Yeah, it's part of your legacy. That's a great legacy to have because the world will be a different place in 20, 30 years. When we're long gone, it'll be it's it's funny to see those moments. It's interesting to see what moments like our legacy is. And you definitely leading the charge on the electric group side electric car side, the EQ side at Mercedes Benz is a big place to be big shoes to, to fill. But, um, that's, I, I'm glad that you guys are taking on and the, the car was great. So I think that's a good place to end the, the podcast and the conversation. And I just want to reiterate here, Mercedes Benz is a company we've worked with a lot of electric car companies, a lot of just traditional companies in general. And we've had so much fun with Mercedes Benz. They, they make such high quality cars and they're open to ideas. We've done some big things on our YouTube channel where we like cut open a seat in the, in the seat division. Like the, a, they have a warehouse or a manufacturing area where it's just for seats, where they test all the seats. Um, we cut open the seats. The video did awesome. Got tons of publications that looked at it. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but there was another big manufacturer in Germany that we, um, that I talked to at a, at a different conference I was speaking at, and it was the head of all of the marketing for the company. I said, yeah, we did this great thing with Mercedes Benz. We cut open a seat and it's the, so things like that are really interesting. And then he comes back at like a few hours later after he watched my keynote and he said, you know, I messaged, I sent your keynote to all these people at, at our company. And they said, we will never let you do that because we consider our cars a piece of art and you can't destroy it. And I'm like, that's fine to each your own. At least Mercedes Benz is not ashamed to say, hey, cut open the seat. But through it, you showed the technology of hot stone massage and heating things. So even though it's like a Mercedes is a legacy manufacturer, I think you're really forward thinking in the way that you do your PR communications and you let weird YouTubers like me take a fancy, super nice car and go buy a Philly cheesesteak and uh, scratch the rim. And you guys are still cool with it and you take the data and learn from it. So I really appreciate you guys coming on the podcast and um, being forward thinking when it comes to YouTubers and media. Um, and I'm really excited to see the EQS roll out in America and then also just all of the EQ products that come out. So Christoph Wolfgang, thank you for being on today and taking the time late at night in Germany. Thank you, Dan. It was really cool. Thanks, Dan. All right. We're going on our first ride right now. This is it. Level five, dude. This is, we just chill, just hang out. The car takes us where we want to go. When it signals, it. Uh, it says it all over the car outside. I mean, imagine like level five autonomous driving. You can do whatever you want in this car. You can sleep, watch a movie, text. You don't need to pay attention.